Amen. It's wonderful to know in your soul yes, sir. that God is uh, real. Right. And you know he's real because of what he has done for you. Amen. Sometimes it doesn't seem like much, and sometimes it seems like a lot. But you know that every good thing that happens to you yeah. is because of God. Yeah. And we are thankful for that. It's good to see everyone that have gathered here today. We have some missing today. Some are missing, they're traveling. Brother Lewis is at the Mona Boulevard Church of Christ. Uh, they asked him to come down and do something special, I'm not sure exactly. But we have others who are sick and infirmed in the hospitals and the convalescent homes, and we just want to remember to, uh, to petition God on their behalf. And I hope that God will raise them up and build them up. Amen. Are you glad to be here? Yes. Amen. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be standing before you at this time. Yes. Now, uh, the lesson we have today is going to be, I'm still working along the theme of what time is it. It's time to do more. Right. And uh, you have your, your information sheets there, and you know kind of like what I'm going to be saying uh, today. And so uh, the scripture readings that I chose, 1 Kings 2, 1 through 3, and Ecclesiastes 12, 13. And you know we're very familiar with the second scripture. We are familiar with the one that says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Uh, uh, the ecclesiastical writer, when it all boiled down to everything he was talking about, and all the times that were going on, the time for this and that, and all the things he discussed, at the end he drew a line of demarcation, and that line was, uh, Fear God yeah. and keep his commandments. Yeah, right. Now when we look at 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, here you have King David. As he's beginning, he's going to die. Mm -hmm. He talks to his son Solomon. Right. And he gives him a charge. And he said that in verse number 2, I am going the way of all the earth. Right. That means every man and woman that lives has to die. Yes. And when you finish that cycle, you're only completing what every man and woman before you have already done. Right. Lived and died. He said, I'm going that way. And I'm going uh, to die. But I want you to be strong, mm -hmm. therefore, and demonstrate or show thyself a man, and I, I, I think that this is important when, when men talk to their sons yes. and they uh, see their own uh, uh, finality, uh -huh. they would like to think that their offspring would be a man, yes. would be a man in every true sense of the word a man, a man that yeah. took care of family, took care of business, stood up for God and did the things that were right. He said, you know what? I'm going to die, but I want you to be a man. Okay. And I think about that, you know, that, that charge to be mature and to be respectful and to be upright. That's a charge that God wants us to have. He wants us to be mature adults uh, in our spiritual existence. Amen. Verse number three says, and keep the charge of the Lord thy God. What was that charge? To walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as is written in the law of Moses. God has some requirements of mature people. He wants them to do certain things. Now here it all refers and reflects to the law of Moses. He said I want you to keep all of it. Everything that was said in statute, in commandments, in judgment, in testimony, and what was written in the law of Moses. Yes. 
that thou mayest in all that thou doest, and wherever thou turns, I said, wherever you go, and whatever you do, right. keep the commandments of God. Yes. So you know, we understand that there is an implied expectation that people of God should obey the commandments of God. Yes. And we understand that God has not left us here with no direction. Right and with no purpose. He has let it be known in the Old and especially in the New Testament exactly what we need to do to fulfill His will. Amen. So we have what I call the command. Yes, and all God's expecting us is obedience. <clears throat> but it's just like uh, uh, when you're a parent and you tell your children the command. They hear it, but sometimes they don't obey. And there's some kind of disconnect. There's a gap sometimes between command and obedience. And sometimes the, the parent has to bridge the gap by instituting elements of, uh, uh, of uh, encouragement. Uh, uh, uh. Well, you gotta bridge the gap. You got the command. We want you to do to be obey, to obey. And sometimes we got to urge the young person to obey quickly. And we had a rule in our house. Most times they spoke to you once, and they didn't speak twice. When they spoke the second time, it came with the encouragement. Right. That's right. Usually it came during. Yeah. Thought I told you already. You know, some, you know, they can all get into a rhythmic, a rhythmic encouragement. Thought I told you long time ago, do what you want to do. Get up, my friend, and and you would get up because you knew it was time to bridge the gap from command and obedience. And I'm telling you right now, Jesus Christ and God have commands and he wants us to obey. You want to do more for God? You got to bridge the gap between command and obedience. You got to. And God's expecting you to get up and do what you're supposed to do quickly. Jesus said in John 14 and 15, if you love me, yes. keep my commandments. Yes. In John 14, 21, it says, those who obey my commandments are the ones who love me. Mm -hmm. And because they love me, my Father will love them. Yes. And I will love them also. Mm -hmm. And I will reveal myself to each one of them. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse, you just write these down, they're not on the board. Loving God means keeping his commandments. And it's just not that difficult. The King James Version said his commands are not grievous. So we understand that commands have been given. We have to understand that. God has a will that he's already spoken. And we as his children should obey. And we should obey quickly. So what time is it, church? It's time to do more. Amen. And we got to close the gap between God's command and our performance. Amen. Because if we're going to do more, we got to start doing something. Amen. It's more than lip service, flapping gums, telling folks that it's got to be some action involved. If we do more for God, we need to work hard on closing the gap between command and performance. You know, uh, 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 it's kind of like these two sides of the auditorium. If you're sitting in your seat where Brother Ernie is at, and sitting where Brother Moore is at, and you wanted to pass, you, didn't, you wanted to give him something, right. and you weren't going to leave your seat, you would need somebody to stand in the gap. Right. And they would pass it to, to him or pass it back. So sometimes God uses people to help fill the gap right. between command and obedience. Yeah. He told Moses, he chose Moses to fill 
the gap in Deuteronomy 5. The whole text will be 1 through 10. But specifically in verse number 5. You know, here he's telling Israel about the commandments. Verse number 1. The statutes and the judgments that he spoke unto them. The covenant. He talked about that in, in verse number 2. And the covenant was not just made with the fathers, he said, but was made with us in, chapter, in verse number 3. The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount in the midst of the fire. He said in verse number 5, though, I thought this was interesting. What does it say in verse 5? I stood between the Lord. I stood between what? The Lord. The Lord. And you at that time. And you at that time. Sometimes God used people to stand and fill the gap. He said, I stood between the Lord and you. Why? To show you the works of the Lord. I wanted to show you the works of the Lord. Sometimes some people don't get it. They have to look to us and others for their example. They just don't get it. They can't seem to figure it out. But God will place somebody in the gap to try to bridge that gap between his commands and obedience through an example that the man or the woman in the gap is performing. Amen. Come on. I stood between the Lord and you in the gap to show the works of the Lord. Keep reading. For you were afraid. You were afraid. By reason of fire. You were of reason of fire. You were scared. You were afraid. Right. And you did not go up into the mountain. Went up into the mountain, saying. You see, they knew that Moses went up to the mountain. Yes. They saw the fire and the smoke, and they were scared. And then Moses said, I had to stand as a form of humanity between spirituality and your calamity. And you can see that my belief and my faith bridged the gap. Yeah. And I'm telling you, there are people here in this church right now that are too weak to make it for themselves. Amen. They're too weak to understand. And they are looking to us to bridge the gap. The people in the community, they don't understand. They don't even have the knowledge of Jesus Christ. But we do. They're looking to the church to fill the gap. Amen. It was Joshua that filled the gap. In Joshua 24 and verse number 15, when they had lost their faith and folks were going in a different direction, Joshua stood up and commanded obedience to the word of God. Yes. He filled the gap for the children of Israel at that time between the commands of God and their obedience. Yes. What does it say in Joshua 24 verse 15? And if it seems evil unto you, if it seems evil unto you, to serve the Lord, and it must have, choose you this day. It must have, but they wasn't doing it. Yeah. He said, choose you this day. Whom you will serve. Whom you gonna serve. Whether the gods, whether the gods your served, that your father served. On the other side of the flood. Will you serve the gods your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt? Or the gods of the Amorites. What are you, what are you gonna do? In whose land you will. Uh -huh. But as for me and my house. He okay. stood in the gap with the example of self, humility, and obedience. Yeah. As for me and, and my house. We will serve the Lord. Now I can't talk about your house. A man can't talk about another man's house. Right. A woman can't talk about another woman's house. People try to. <laughs> <laughs> Wanna judge folk for filthiness and cleanliness and everything else, but that's not your business. <laughs> the bottom line is that you can only speak for your own house. Amen. Joshua stood in the gap, trying to help these individuals know that God has commands and he expects obedience. Yes. If they had an issue and couldn't see it, look at him. Yes. Just look at him. Jesus used the Holy Spirit to close the gap. Jesus didn't leave us out there just hanging, knowing, of, knowing we had commands, but not knowing how to do it or how to accomplish it. Jesus sent the Comforter 
Amen. In John 14 and 26, is that on the board? Yes, sir. What does it say? But the Comforter. The Comforter. Which is the Holy Ghost. Which is the Holy Ghost. Whom the Father will send in my name. He'll send it in my name. He shall teach you all things. Teach you all things. And bring them, bring all things to your remembrance. That's the gap filler. What I said to you. Amen. That is the Holy Spirit that fills the gap yes. and helps you remember Amen. and bring everything to your remembrance. Right. When you can't remember it or, or it fails you, it's the Holy Spirit that brings it to you. And when you can't function and you connive and slip, maybe it's because the Holy Spirit not in you to fill the gap. In Acts chapter 2, 30, I've been pounding this in your head. When you're baptized, God does what? Gives you a piece of him. Right. He gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit. And if the Spirit is there, it will help you fill the gap. Yeah. In John 16, uh, John uh, 15, verse 26, what does it say? But when the Comforter, when the comforter has come, I will send it to you. Now the Comforter is the Holy Spirit. He's going to be sent. He said, when it comes... When it comes, whom I send unto you from the Father, read. Even the spirit of truth. It's a spirit of truth. Which proceedeth from the Father. Uh-huh. He shall testify of me. He will, he will testify of Jesus. Yes. It is in this moment in the, when the Holy Spirit helps you understand the testimony of Jesus. Amen. If you can't figure it out on yourself, Amen. if you can't remember it, if you're, if you're falling day in and day out, it is the Holy Spirit yes, sir. that testifies of Jesus. Yes, in John 16 and verse number 8, what does it say? And when he, and when he has come, come, he will reprove the he, world of sin. Yes, keep reading. And of righteousness and of judgment. He's going to help you understand Amen. the differences and he's going to rebuke sin and uphold righteousness and judgment. Yes. The Holy Spirit is the gap filler that will convince the world of its sin and of, and of God's righteousness. Amen. It also helps you. Yes. Helps you understand yes. what you're supposed to do. Yes, God expects obedience. And he has given commands. And the Holy Spirit is working to fill the gap Amen. today. Yes, We're not left alone today. When you're in the gap, when you're in the gap, working for God, you're not by yourself. Amen. God is aware of the gap between his perfection and our sinfulness. Even as Christians, there's a constant tension within us to try to close the gap so that we feel more comfortable, so that we'll feel closer to God. Yes. Some people will try to close the gap by trying to lower God's standards. Uh -oh. Make it about God and not about us. God doesn't really mean this. The Bible doesn't really state this. God can't expect us to do this. They want to close the gap, but they want to put the problem on God. Others will try to close the gap by trying to raise their performance, making it about them. I'll try harder. I'll do better. I'll go further. I'll do more. Yep. What does God say about this gap? God is still God. Right. Man is, is, is still man. Right. The gap is there. But in order to bridge the gap, you have to have faith. You see that gap on the board? Yeah. Man's on one side. God's on the other side. Yeah. To bridge the gap, you got to take the leap of faith. Yeah, that's good. You got to take the leap of faith. Now, judging by that man's distance, I think he'll make it. I think his faith is strong. I think he can make it to the other side. Some of us are so weak in our faith that we made that leap. We ain't going to make it. We're not going to make it. We can't elevate enough. We can't get enough going in the right direction. But see, we have to have the faith in God. In Hebrews 11, verse number 6, one of our favorite verses. Yes, yes, but without faith, what does it say? Oh, it is impossible to please him. Uh huh. But he that cometh to God what? must believe that he is. Yes. And that he is a reporter of them that diligently seek him. 
To be in the gap is to understand the faith in God. In order to be a faithful servant of God, you have to believe in God and you have to believe that he will help you. Amen. We begin the journey of obedience when we possess faith that can save and move mountains. Yes. In Matthew 7, verse number 20, you can read it. And Jesus said unto them, Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, ah, some folk didn't have any belief. They not going to make the leap. They're not going to be successful. Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, verily I say unto you, if you have the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, if you just had the faith of a grain of a mustard seed. You shall say to this mountain. You can say to this mountain. Remove hence to so that's not a lot. I don't know. A grain of a mustard seed. Mm -hmm. Is that on the board? Yes, sir. Oh. A grain of a mustard seed. A grain of a mustard seed. Yes, not very big. They say it's one of the tiniest of all the seeds. But you plant it in the ground and it grows up into the plant in the tree of the mustard. But the thing about it is that if you had that kind of faith, that small amount of faith, you can say to a mountain, yes, sir. remove, hence, yes, to yonder place. Yes, sir. Like, get out of my way. <laughs> get out of my way. Go somewhere else. Remove, hence, to yonder place. I like the way he said, remove, hence, to yonder place. Yeah, I like There's some folks I like to tell that. <laughs> <laughs> remove, hence, to yonder place. <laughs> out of my face. But the bottom line, if I had the faith in God, Mountains would be no challenge. Certainly. Any type of thing is not going to overwhelm me. And he said, I say move, and it shall what? And it shall be removed. It shall be removed. And nothing shall be impossible. And nothing shall be impossible for you. You can fill the gap. Because nothing can stop you from doing it. Amen. Nothing can stop you from being the type of Christian you need to be. You want to do more? Nothing can stop you when you have the, the amount of faith you need. Amen. Nothing can stop you. Faith, you have to have the faith that Jesus lived and died for our sins. Yes, faith that we have been forgiven of our sins. Yes, sir. Faith that we can be righteous in God in Christ's eyes. Yeah. Faith that we are precious in his eyes. Amen. Faith that God holds us in his hand of care. Amen. Faith that he loves us Amen. unconditionally. In spite of the gap, our faith declares that we're able and willing to obey. We can see there's a distance between us and God. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We can see the divide. We can feel the pressure and the tension. All right. But our faith tells us we can make it. Amen. That we can make it. And we don't have to quit. We can make it. Even when things are not going right. And I know every person in here has a testimony that you can tell when things weren't going right. Sure. Yeah. You didn't know exactly how you were going to make it. Wow. But you did. Exactly. Faith still did it for you. Yeah. Faith in Jesus and Jesus and, and, and God and you were able to do it. So in Romans 5, 1 through 2 it says we are justified by our faith. We have peace with God through our Lord, Jesus Christ. Justified in that text means primarily we are deemed to be right in the eyes of God. Righteous. Because uh, uh, when you think about it, without God, we're unrighteous. We're not justified. But with God, we are justified. So we must demonstrate our faith. And we must demonstrate that we're not just justified and righteous, but we're willing to obey his commands. Amen. What does God want? I, I don't know, I'm gonna to try to get to the end of this, but if I don't, I'm not gonna worry about it. What does God and Christ want? We've been talking about that on Sunday evenings. You might have missed it if you weren't there. It is likely, however, you will come to a point in your life when you begin to think that surely God must now want something for repayment <clears throat> for what they have done for us. Yeah. Several facts we must admit. 
God and Christ have done some wonderful things Amen. for us to become a Christian. Amen. We have to admit that. Yes, sir. Some wonderful things have been brought in our lives for us to be where we're at right now. Amen. When you became a Christian, the weight of responsibility God carried in the process of redemption and your effort in obtaining salvation, God chose you before the foundation of the world, called you to be his. That's right. That's right. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 2. Bible there says, if it's on the board. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith. You know what? If I don't have faith, I'm not right in God's sight. Mm -hmm. But since I have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God. Peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Amen. Yeah, I'm at peace with God. Keep reading. Because of our faith. Because of our faith. Christ has brought us unto this place of highest privilege where we will now stand. You don't think you're at a place of high privilege? You didn't get there by yourself. Amen. You didn't take yourself to that place. Amen. Matter of fact, you don't know where that place is. And you can't go there without God's guidance. Amen. Amen. Who did say took you there? Verse number three, two. Christ, Christ have what? Brought, brought you to this place. You don't know where that place is at. No. Without God, you can't get there. Right. A place of highest privileges. Where we do what? Now stand. We stand in there, sister. We're standing there. God brought us there. Amen. By our faith, yes, Jesus led us to this place. Yes. That's a sermon in itself. Yes, sir. Standing on the highest privileges of mankind. Amen. But the more you start working on that, I'll let you see what you're going to do with it. <laughs> yeah, standing on the highest privileges that mankind can stand. And Jesus brought us there because of our faith. If we don't have faith, mm -hmm. yes. we can't get to where we're supposed to be. And there we stand, it says. Keep reading, brother, the and last we part. Confidently we confidently and joyfully, and joyfully looking forward to sharing God's glory. Are you confident today? Are you joyous today? Can you say hallelujah today? You're standing in the highest privileges of God because Jesus brought you there. Can't you say hallelujah? hallelujah. Can't you say praise him? Praise You're where you could not take yourself because of your faith in God. Amen. That's how you fill the gaps today. Amen. You are who you are by the grace of God. Amen. God came to earth for you. Personally died for you made sure someone explained the gospel to you. Right. Offered it to you. Yes, in John 1, verse number 12, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave them the right to become the children of God. God gave you the desire to know him and respond to him. You turned to him and received him. You entered into life, declared your righteousness, forgiven of your sin, called to be his own. He has put you in the highest privilege that a man can be, and you got nothing to say about it. Amen. All I got to say is this. I thank God for the church. Amen. And I thank God for being born into the church. I thank God for being taught the word of God. I thank God for having a willingness to obey his teaching. I thank God that Jesus died for my sin and he's taken me up to the heights of glory. What kind of glory? My highest privileges. I'm going to take me some of that for myself. Yeah, that's right. I'm looking for some of that myself. You know what? I don't have any high privileges down here. Pay my taxes like anybody else. Go broke when my money go, runs out. Hungry when my food is there, when my covers are bare. I have no highest privilege. No. But when I'm with Jesus and God, I have high privileges. Amen. And that's where I stand. Amen. That's where I'm going to be confident. That's where I'm going to be joyous. That's where I'm going to live. And I'm going to try to help folk Amen. bridge the gap between God's commands 
and their obedience. Amen. Who wants to stand in the gap with me today? Because if you really want to do more for God, get in the gap. Yeah. Get in the gap and stand between men and God yeah. and be a reflection of the Son of God. The light of the world, the city that sits on a hill, you need to be there. Be the salt of the world. That's your job. If you really today, if you really today want to do more for God, get in the gap. Amen. And I'm, I'm challenging you, I'm going to get in the gap because I know that the Holy Spirit is going to help me survive. That's all I've got for today. That's all I'm going to preach today. The bottom line is that God is good. Yes. And I feel just like David when David was talking to Solomon and told him, just be a man. Yes, just be a man. I, in enough words, that's so much. It says so much. Yes, if my daddy told me, be a man, I mean, that's a lot for him to say. Yes, and I'm telling you that God in heaven wants you and me to be mature today. Yes, sir. To be adult today. To understand what he's done for you and to then be able to obey the statutes, commands, and the ordinances, and everything that's written in the scripture. Amen. That's how we fill the gaps today. We'll finish this next time I get up. We'll finish this. Let's fill the gaps today. Amen. If you're a member of the church, you have not done your job. You are at the workplace and they don't even know how to fill the gap. They're talking foolishness. They believe in everything that, that they want to, and you're standing there just looking at it and like you're mesmerized, like a, 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 as you say, a, a calf at a new gate. <laughs> you don't know what you're looking at. But you're supposed to be there to fill the gap. Amen. That's why God has you there. You think you're there to make money for whatever corporate places. You're there to fill the gap so that people can get a glimpse of what humanity and Christianity really is. That's what you're there for. Amen. Bridge it. Amen. Bridge the gap. Amen. Help somebody understand Jesus. Amen. Teach them the word of God today. Amen. Teach them that Jesus Christ lived and died and rose again, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Teach them about how the gospel will save them, Matthew uh, 28, 19 and 20. Right. Teach them what they need to know to be a different person and a new creature in God. You got to teach them. Yeah. Right. You want to do more for God? Fill it. Yeah. Fill the gap today. You're in the gap. Yes, sir. And God's expecting you to do something for him. Amen. If you haven't been doing it, you need to repent. Yes, sir. You need to say, I'm sorry, God. Right. I've let you down. You took me to a place of highest privilege and I just and I just shunned my nose at it. You've seen people like that. All the opportunities they ever had, they threw it away like they didn't care. Right. But that's us. All that God is willing to give us and we just throw it away. Mercy. Repent of your sins, Luke 13, 3 and 5. Ask God to forgive you and then get back on the right path. Have somebody pray for you in John 5, verse 16. A righteous person perfectionally praying for you to get better with God. Do you want to help me fill the gap today? Do you? Yes. Then we need to get ourselves right with God. If you're not a member of the church of Christ, why the church of Christ? Because Jesus said, I'm going to build my church in Matthew 16 and verse number 18. He said, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Why church of Christ? Romans 16, 16, they saluted the churches of Christ. Why? Because it belongs to Christ. Why? Because it's the bride of Christ. Once you understand what Jesus has done and you believe they did it for your sin and you're willing to repent of your sin and confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God, like the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts 8, about verse 35 and 36, that he was the Son of God, then you can be baptized. And if you have not done all that, then you're not, you're, you're not saved. Amen. Amen. Baptism, Romans uh, chapter 6, verses 3 and 4, 1, Corinthians, uh, no, 1 Peter 3, 20 and 21, baptism does now save us. Just like it saved the folk of Noah, water saved Noah and those individuals is going to save us today. Amen. If you have never been baptized, that means not sprinkled or sloshed or whatever. It means going under yes. the water. Yes. If you haven't had that, then you haven't been saved. But I'm telling you, that's what you can do. And then you can get in a position to help somebody. Amen. So we need to bridge that gap today. Yes, sir. Some invitation. Hide you in the blood of Jesus. We're going to sing it encouragingly. 
And if you need to get your life right, this is the time. Because I'm saying we all have to work together yes, sir. to fill the gap. Because you know what? There are people in your life that I cannot fill the gap for. It's true. You're the only person that can do it. It's true. And if you don't do it, they are lost and doomed. Amen. So let's fill that gap today. Let's stand for a second. If you want to make something right today, if you know you haven't been doing what's right in front of God, you need to come on down. Can I tell you one thing? God has given you this opportunity. Yes. He won't give it to you forever. Yes. Right now, he's asking you to come down and get it right. But one day, he's going to be standing before him and say, you didn't get it right. right. Uh -huh. So we got a chance right now. Yes, sir. Get it right right now as we sing. Amen. Come from the Lord.